So let's um, kind of do a, you know, a little bit of a deep dive into um, kind of women and capitalism. So we, um, the initially, as capitalism um, emerges, right, as, as it, and as it emerges as um, particularly industrial, um, industrialized commodity production, domestic labor is devalued. Um, and what the, really practically what this means is that factory production increases. And as more and more people are thrown out of agricultural production and they have to sell their labor power to factory owners and get a wage in order to survive. This means that because more and more people are now not um, working on the land and, and more and more people lack the means um, of subsistence or they lack the ability to make what they need to survive, they have to go earn it. So literally it happens that households stop producing the use values that they have done for centuries and centuries and centuries. Right? The items that they produced at home, often by women like candles and soap or cloth, these become commodities to be purchased on the market. And so factories make them, that makes money for the capitalist, and people have to buy them. And guess what? That also makes money for the capitalist. Capitalist. And then people aren't at home. And so they go work for the capitalists, which makes money for the capitalists. So folks have to earn money to purchase things that they used to make. And this, uh, the, the site where they used to be made now, um, the home or domestic sphere is completely devalued. So we're used to thinking then about this split between domestic and industrial production or uh, Marx also talks about that split as a split between household and social production or, you know, production that requires, um, you know, a lot of people and a large accumulation of fixed capital. We, we rightly think about this as linked to the um, sexual division of labor because the domestic sphere has been a sphere of women's work and the men's sphere has been one of paid labor. And this solidified exactly as you said at the beginning in this kind of post-World War II vision of the nuclear family. But it never, ever described all households, you know, not in the U.S., not in Europe. If we just think about the U.S., like um, working class women and children, even in the 19th century, were in factories and working under horrible conditions and for terrible wages. And one of the things that made these conditions especially bad for women is that the, their husbands and fathers controlled what they basically what they could earn. They could take the, the husbands and fathers could take the wages earned by women and children because women were under the legal authority of men, right? Women couldn't own property. They couldn't sign contracts. They couldn't get a mortgage, couldn't testify in court. Obviously, they couldn't vote. I mean, people, and even in, until the, like the 1970s, after decades of women's struggles, only then were women able to even have credit cards. So um, working class men have fought for a family wage that's really important enough to support a family, but... Um, once women entered the workforce, you know, women need to start winning and did start earning wages, too. So we've got to we've got to be really critical of this. Any of this effort to return to the family wage. The guy who wrote oh, J.D. Vance, he wrote um, Hillbilly Hillbilly Elegy. He's campaigning directly on um, a slogan for the family wage, meaning women should not be in the workplace. You know, yes, it's good to pay it's good to pay everybody more, but on the family wage, it means you're just paying men more because they're supposed to be supporting their wives. Additionally, I was talking about the um, conditions for um, working class families. We also, of course, have to mention that black women in the U.S. have only rarely been housewives in the domestic sphere. Most of the time, um, black women have had to earn money working in other people's homes and caring for other people's children and cleaning up their messes. Um, and black women have had these domestic jobs, you know, repeating the patterns of the plantation because racist and sexist employment practices blocked them from opportunities. And because black, black men were blocked from decently waged jobs available to um, white male workers. Um, some of the, the most interesting stuff written by um, black communist women in the 30s and 40s is pointing out 
their different position because black men were blocked from decently waged um, jobs. Like black men never got the family wage or only very rarely after um, they were able in the um, early 50s to get um, better jobs in the auto industry. But for the most part, they were black, blocked from decently waged jobs. And it's only with really fierce and committed struggle that um, um, you know, black people and women have been able to access that. So since the late 70s, with the availability of birth control and abortion, the number of women in the um, engaging in paid work or in the you know, waged workplace has increased dramatically. Um, now it's a roughly 57 percent of women who are in the paid labor force and about 69 percent of men. So it's still more men in the paid labor force, but about 57 percent of all women work for an income. And one of the reasons, in addition to women wanting to work, um, is the majority of households depend on the income from two adults to make ends meet. And often this isn't even enough. And the adults might have to engage, have to have more than one job in order to you know, pay the rent and pay the bills. So I think in general, what we need to think about when we think about the effects of Roe now because of women's changed labor position is that it's going to be devastating for all working people, right? It's going to have a huge um, impact on women's ability to work outside the home. It's going to have a huge impact on expenses in the home, which under we're experiencing a lot of inflation right now. So we can just imagine if there's more and more mouths to feed and kids to close that and then daycare to provide, which is also super expensive. And workers know this. Right. All workers know that um, women will still have abortions because the costs of, you know, of not having them are so great. It's just going to be more and more dangerous and more and more risky for them. Um, and it's also going to increase the um, presence and power of police and surveillance in our lives, I think, in ways that. Um, we you know, have not yet even begun to imagine. So um, women are, have been in the workforce now, for um, heavily in the workforce for over 40 years and it, are not going to be able to be, are not going to accept being forced back into the home, but it's going to then be a fight over, you know, how can they control their reproduction? It's going to be super hard.